Hi everyone, happy Sunday. So I know the cover, I didn't give hardly any time there. Um, I am coloring out of Whimsical Cats by Angela Porter. This is actually my first page out of this book. And I figured um, it would be a good choice for the color along this month for my alphabet color along, which is alphabet color 2022 OPQ. Um, for those of you not familiar with it, I will put the tag in the description. I have found that, um, well, one thing is I want to use my Arteza Real Brush pens, which are basically like watercolor uh, markers. I want to try to use those monthly just because I hadn't been using them very often up until a few months ago. And... Um, so um, they do really well in the Creative Haven books. So I do try to use them in, you know, on a page in there at least once a month. And um, one thing I am finding is with those, I tend to prefer use, uh, using alcohol markers for bigger spaces and then saving those for the smaller ones just because of the size of the markers and the way they lay down. They just don't for me do well in large spaces. Um, I could dip them in water and probably create like more of a specific watercolor background. Um, but I just, that I don't like to use them that way. So um, most of these will end up probably having some alcohol marker with them filling in the big areas, kind of like I'm doing here with the nighttime sky. I guess this technically also applies to Watercolor Summer 2022 since I am using the watercolor markers. So I hope everyone is having a great weekend. I figured I would try to sneak in a color and chat before my first day at my new job, which starts on Monday. I'm actually recording this on Saturday, so. Um, Definitely feeling a bit nervous about it. I really wish I had had another week <laughs> to prepare, but I don't think I would have been any less nervous next weekend than I am right now. So really and truly, I don't know how much good it would have done. Might as well go ahead and get started and um, work my way into it. The first few weeks is going to be a lot of just training and getting familiar with the company and then the last week of the month I am more than likely going to be traveling to their headquarters and go, I have to go cross country for that and I'll be out there for a week for onboarding which should be fun. I've never um, flown that far or been on that side of the on the west side of the country before. Um, the farthest I've flown, I think, has been New York. So <laughs> I've been to Florida and I've been to New York. Um, so I, I've done the East Coast and on the East Coast pretty well, but no no, uh, no experience on the West Coast area. So this should be interesting. <clears throat> I have to, uh, yeah, I have to make a list of things to get for the trip. I'm going to have to check a bag, which I hate to do because I'm always worried they're going to lose my luggage. But there's just no way I'm going to be able to take enough office clothes and my CPAP and everything else in a carry-on bag. So um, I just don't see it happening. I also like to get a travel CPAP, but man, those are expensive. And while... It should be fine in a couple of months. I just didn't really want to make that expense right now. But I may still get it. I don't know. I did upgrade my mask that I'm going to wear on the flight. Since I will be on the flight for probably about five hours or so. Um, I did get... Um, it, it's still kind of N95 rated. But it's a respirator. It's called an Envo mask. And um, the thing I like about it is it has a gel uh, kind of seal to it that can make the mask easy to clean. Um, I love I love the N95 mask that I wore when I went to Philadelphia. They worked great. The problem is, um, I guess, whatever chemical is on the mask just made my face break out horrifically. Like... 
just it it was like that for a week after I got back I I don't normally have to wear them very long in places because I work from home and to just have to wear them seven eight hours a day and have that constantly in my face and you know you can't wash a disposable mask like that so I'm really hoping with the new mask because I can um because it's just a you know plastic gel type um mask that I can easily limit those types of breakouts and everything plus it does seem to be more secure and I feel a little more comfortable having that on on a long flight like that so um not thrilled about traveling um but I at this point will just do the best I can do and do everything I can to avoid getting sick and I was able to before and this will probably be uh, other than being on the plane for a long period of time um, where I'm at it's going to be a lot less populated than the convention was so um, you know hopefully things work out plus I went ahead and got the updated variant booster this week it takes about two weeks for it to kick in and um, I wanted to make sure that it had plenty of time to fully kick in before I left. This does um, help provide some protection against the newer variants so um, I'm hoping with that little bit of an extra um, boost <laughs> so to speak that um, that'll help with prevention even more so so yeah um, I do work remotely so you know like I said I'll have about two weeks of training and here comes Sid you're going to see her a little bit. I was coloring this yesterday and she just decided she wanted to be pet and get in my way. And so eventually I actually pause it and take a while to pet her. And then she proceeds to start knocking stuff off my desk because she wants to play. So, so yeah, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> now so it's gone. Um so like I said I've been using marker to alcohol marker to fill in the back part of it um, using Copics and then this Cali art I think this is beetle is is the name of it a dark green for the bottom um, area so and then I use like a cool gray one and a cool gray three on the fence just um, alternating them just to give a, a little bit different of an effect so but, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. So what have I been doing with my time off? Um, not much really. I, um, I did go get that updated booster and, and one of the reasons too was I wanted to give me, give myself plenty of time through the weekend to recover. And while I felt pretty bad when I got home from it, um, had some nausea and some back pain and had a little bit of it yesterday um, I have not had nearly the side effects I've had with the previous boosters like that would make me feel sick for two or three days and um, I've actually felt still tired but not I don't know it just hasn't affected me as much so Again, that results may vary. I did get the Pfizer one, which supposedly has less in it than the Moderna. Um, so that might be um, part of it. But I've always been getting Pfizer in the past, so I don't know. Anyway, so um, went and did that. Went and visited with my parents a bit late last week. Did a really big grocery pickup so we would go ahead and be in good shape grocery wise for you know pretty much the rest of the month and um I haven't really been doing too much else hang on sorry I'm out messing with the mic um I've been like it, it's just I've been in a weird mood <laughs> this week like there were I don't know some days I, I feel like I've been in a really good mood and other days I've just been extra grumpy for some reason and I don't really know why. <laughs> I did have some onboarding stuff I had to take care of um, before my first day at work. And I got all my paperwork done. 
um, one of the things that was stressing me out is I had to take a badge photo and um, uh, I I did go get my hair cut and colored earlier this week if you want to see what it looks like and you hadn't had a chance yet um, check out the community tab but I did get a little more blue added to my hair, which hopefully won't be a problem. Um, I mean, I interviewed with these people with blue in my hair, and it didn't seem to be an issue. But you just never know, right? Um, so hopefully that won't be a problem. But I tried to take the badge photo, and it didn't come out right. So they wanted me to take it again. So then I had to go put makeup on and try to find an off-white wall in my house. And... <laughs> let me tell you right now that there's there's like a small patch upstairs on the landing that is off-white and the rest of this house is is full of color I've never been one to really like white or off-white walls and I didn't want to have to go down to the library or somewhere and be like hey can I you know use your use the library to take a picture or something I just you know for anti-social me that seems pretty pretty silly so I did manage to get a photo approved. I don't like the way I look in it, but um, I did get it approved and just, I got everything done. Um, she's having me start on um, Pacific time. That's when our meeting time is um, to get me situated. I don't know yet what that means. I had asked the recruiter, you know, do they expect me to work? Pacific time hours? Am I working central time hours? What am I working? And she basically was just like, um, you're, you'll need to just be flexible and, and it's based on, um, I don't know why, if you see this, it, the camera went a little jerky for some reason. But, um, a lot of it's going to depend on when you have your meeting times and stuff, but for the most part, um, as long as you get your work done we don't really care when you work and so while I like the sound of that I also want to confirm that with my lead because <laughs> there actually would be some benefits to working um, Pacific time would be two hours later in the day so um, instead of or would it be three is it two or three I think it's two so instead of starting at eight o'clock every day I'd start at ten and I'd work until seven instead of five. So um, I, there are some advantages to it. I um, I hopefully would be able to not be as fatigued during the day if I could get a little more sleep in the mornings um, because you know afternoon fatigue has been a constant issue of mine for a long time. Um, and um, just I seem to struggle the most with it around five six seven like just trying to keep myself awake or whatever but if I'm logged into work then um, you know obviously it's a bigger incentive to be awake during that time and um, and also that way if I have a doctor's appointment or something I could do right at eight o'clock then I could probably get back home by ten so um, there's, you know, some advantages to that, but I don't know for sure. Um, I suspect probably the first few weeks, mm, depending on how many meetings I have, it's probably going to be more, um, West Coast time. And then obviously the week that I'm there, it's going to be, um, West Coast time. So, um, like I said, it may get to the point where I like it so much. That's just what I stick with. So we we shall see. But um, so yeah, just been um, slowly preparing for that. I've been I don't know. I just I've been weirdly fatigued this week and just I I'm thinking so in December I'm supposed to go see my a, a new rheumatologist in Nashville and I had to call to find this guy in June and he didn't have an opening till December so that's the reason it's been so long but I'm seriously thinking about trying um I've held on to my antidepressant for as long as I can because I feel like it's been working and my insurance doesn't like it because it's not a generic 
and there's no generic and it's expensive and of course the insurance wants to get me off of it and I know the moment I go off of it it's going to be impossible to probably to get back on it if I needed to but I, I've really here in the last I don't know three to four months it's really started wondering if it's even really working as well as it it did and I'm on the max dose at this point so it might be that I have to switch to something else however I really don't want to do that right now um, just obviously with starting a new job and everything the last thing I want to do is go mucking around with my meds I'd rather do that December will be a good time because um, I'm sure there will be some time off for holidays and things like that and probably um, I don't anticipate this will be a job that's busy during retail time I could be wrong like to, during you know sales and stuff like that I could be wrong but um, that might be a good time and I'll have been in for a couple months and stuff so it might be a good time to try something a little different so I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes but um, I just have not been as relaxed and my mood has not been where you would think it would be with the new job and everything coming down. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just like I, I've always said, people don't like change, even if it's good change. And so my body subconsciously is like, oh, this has changed. So now I'm going to worry about it and be nervous about it. And just different things. Like I said, every little thing I do, I, I worry over whether or not it's my my body's conditioned to worry about anything and everything right now so um but I just haven't really felt like doing a whole lot I haven't even felt like coloring a whole lot um I actually had quite a lot of fun with this picture just there was no I don't know I didn't really set any expectations for this picture when I saw it I just assumed this was going to you know when I started off I even planned to just straight color it and I was going to do it with just regular alcohol markers and then um, the only things I really saw were like hey I want to leave the fence white or gray and then I want to do um, play with colors and the color wheel with the cats on top where we do the opposites on the color wheel for each cat and um, that was about as far as I got with it and then I decided to add the real brush pens and add a little bit of blending but I don't know it just this one felt a little more relaxed than I feel like some of my colorings have been lately um, so I've I've quite I quite enjoyed this one actually so um, but maybe it's just, I mean, I have been coloring a lot lately and, you know, like everybody else, I do hit slumps where I'm just not feeling up to it all that much. And, um, it could just be, I've hit one of those points. Um, and, and that's fine. It will come back. But the problem is there's nothing else I really want to do either. <laughs> I was playing a lot of the computer game, um, Two Point Campus that just came out and I was having a lot of fun with that and then I started getting frustrated with it because the last couple of campuses I uh, was running into trouble running out of money um, wasn't getting the achievements I should be getting and it was like really aggravating me so I kind of stopped playing because <laughs> I got mad but I put about 20 hours into the game and it's still a great game I'll get back to it I just I was just frustrated with it and I, I probably should just try a new computer game I'm sure I could find I'll find something that would you know interest me but it's hard I just I'm not really in the mood to play a computer game we have puzzles to work on I haven't felt like doing that I haven't felt like watching any movies just nothing has really sounded good and that's been you know it feels like more than anything I'm just killing time all the time until I have to go to bed and get up and do it all again and I don't like that I mean this is I get little precious time off and it was like I wanted to enjoy this time off and instead 
it doesn't feel like that's been the case and I've kind of sabotaged myself in regards to that so of course there's lots to do too lots to prep for um it's a constant um like even though we you know do a lot of um online ordering and um we don't do a lot of grocery shop shopping at stores for the cats or for ourselves it's still a lot to keep up with in regards to making sure i don't run out of the cat's food especially the ones that are the really picky eaters and so um every week i'm usually having to order something um that they're close to running out of and um i don't know just every day it felt like there was stuff I had to do and um I guess it wasn't really an official time off and um I don't know I don't but it was like when I had the time to do nothing and to do whatever I wanted there was just nothing really I wanted to do and so I hate that feeling and I know that that is definitely a sign of depression a big sign of depression for me um and so that's why i'm thinking my antidepressant just isn't doing doing its job right now so so yeah that's what's been going on with me um like i said physically i've just been really fatigued and just really feeling lazy lately and then feeling guilty about being lazy um so uh, my sleep has improved finally um i finally feel like i'm starting to catch up a little bit on sleep and not feel still feel exhausted you know all the time so that's that's helped a lot and all this makes me extremely nervous for whether or not for my stamina in this job because it's going to definitely not be as laid back as my previous job was and um so i do worry about my energy levels and my stamina and stuff like that in regards to you know i will be able to get the job done but like how much rest am i going to need um I ended up outlining, by the way, ended up outlining this with the black red um, uh, Pentel dual metallic. There we go. Just because I was going to make them black and white, and then I just wanted to introduce a little bit of that kind of dark red that's on that pen. It's supposed to be black and red, but it just looks like red to me. So. As you can see, I am adding a little bit of uh, glitter gel pen in just to create um, a little bit of shine and, and some different little textures and things like that. So, but um, no, and like I said, my list is still there. I still, I still need to switch over some bills from my account to our joint account. I need to, um, I'm going to, I do not have office clothes that fit well because I haven't had to buy any since I was on the city council. So you're talking four or five years now. And, uh, so I'm going to have to buy some new clothes, particularly some new shoes. Um, like I said, I may have to get that travel CPAP, um, and uh yeah try to figure out what i want to bring with me because that week i'm there it will just be me on my own and so i have a figure because i'm i want to do some touristy stuff i'm probably going to be sticking either to outdoors or heavily masking indoors at places and um so there are going to be some evenings that I end up spending in the hotel room on my own. And so I definitely want to make sure I have some stuff to color. I don't want to bring alcohol markers because I've heard people saying that due to like the pressure changes that can cause them to kind of uh, not work right or the ink to leak or something like that on plane rides. So I'll probably be taking like my Tamnets. Um, and, and probably some colored pencils depending on how far I am with the pirate picture I might be taking my stuff to work on the pirate picture while I'm gone so um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see there how that goes um, 
but no, it just, I don't know, nothing feels, I don't feel like I can just relax, and it just, the traveling, I think, has got me nervous just because I don't travel that often, and I'm excited about it, but then I'm also just like, I hate to leave my husband where he has to take care of the cats all week, and while the cats have so scamper went for her follow-up and she had gained a little weight i think i mentioned this in a previous video and the vet was like you know we'll we'll just check her in six months she seems to be doing pretty well let's just keep her on what she's on um and you know maybe she'll continue to do well even without the steroid that she had been taking um but she's been getting picky about eating a little bit again um she's eating she's just picky about what she wants to eat and so i'm worried she's gonna give my husband a hard time while i'm gone winry went to have her kidney values checked this week which stressed me out too because i hate it when any of the cats have to be left at the vet because they get so stressed out and so upset while they're there and I know it's necessary and I know it's best for them and their health and stuff but they get so upset and they get so stressed out and it just breaks my heart I just I can't stand for my babies to be worried and scared like that so um but her all her values are stable which is great because she was I was a uh, it's not just been six months it's probably been more like eight or nine months and so um she was the one before Scamper stopped eating as well that was, you know, having the most health issues. And so seeing her stable has um, really helped me feel better. Um, she didn't have a UTI or anything. and um, But he'll have to give her amitriptyline while I'm gone. We did that when I went to Philadelphia and that seemed to help keep her keep her in better spirits um because last year when I was gone and came back she she developed a really bad UTI due to just she's my my cat she doesn't like anybody else really she tolerates Brent um she'll let him pick her up and stuff she won't bite him but she just she prefers me and uh me being gone stressed her out so bad she got a real bad UTI last year so um obviously constantly worried that's what I'm going to come back to um and just like I said just the fact that you know <laughs> un unbeknownst it seems to this, this as much as the CDC and everybody wants to pretend it's went away COVID has not went away and COVID is a problem and I do not want it I do not want long COVID I've already probably had it once and that's where I got my heart palpitations from and now I have to take medication for them and now they're screwing the medication screwing with my liver so needless to say um I don't want it again and I don't want any more chronic illness issues I have enough to contend with so um you know having being there isn't as stressful it's the plane ride that gets me I just wish they still had mass required on tri on on airplanes I just still do so um but it's not and so I have to deal with it as best I can but there's just a lot of nervousness with that and just I think that's part of it too I I won't be and, and just going and knowing i'm going to be learning a new job and a new system and everything else like i i it's gonna be a while before i feel like i can relax i, I just i have this feeling um hopefully i will still feel like coloring but it just it feels a little overwhelming every time i color now like i feel like i have to do certain things and i don't um, but it's just certain things I've done for so long that I feel like, like, <laughs> I was telling y'all in the pastel pencils video that I like using pastel pencils and markers on, 
um, a lot of Alexander Franzese, Joshua Dunbar, Matchstick Mouse. And so now I feel like I have to do something like that on every one of the pages. I can't just use marker if I want to, or I can't just you know do a certain thing and sometimes when I go to do it and I say okay it's just gonna be marker and then I do the picture and I'm like but it's gonna look so much better if I add you know pencils to it um I'm I'm hard on myself too it's not just expectations I feel like I have to fulfill but it's my own my own issues too I think that's one of the reasons I like this picture so much because other than just a few general ideas, everything else was very casual, but it came together well. I Sometimes when I've, lately, I've really struggled with having a couple ideas and then trying to finish the rest of the picture um, and have it flow. Like, you know, this is how... A lot of my pages have come together in the past easily as I get a few ideas and the rest of it just ends up flowing together well. Um, as I go along, it all works itself out. But like some of them, <laughs> like the watercolor on that pirate uh, story of Precious Cat picture, I was having a devil of a time figuring out what colors I wanted to use. And it just felt like I was pulling teeth. And it's a little bit comforting now because it's like, okay, well, the hard part's done. The color's been, been, decision's been made. Technically, it's light enough. I guess if I wanted to change a color, I could probably do so with the pencils. But um, for the most part, the headache part of it's over. Now it's just the long part of the pencil process is out. By the way, I do have a poll on the community page. Um, actually, it's going to be gone by the time this, this shows up because, um, I'm going to probably take it down. There was a community poll <laughs> asking what types of pencil, what type of pencil y'all want me to use since you want it to be a color along. I figure those of that are interested in the color along, what pencils do you want me to use so you can use them too? Um, but it'll be gone by the time this picture goes up because I will be working on it tomorrow morning. And, and start working on it Sunday in order to get it loaded for Monday night. So the decision will be made um, probably first thing Sunday morning. So um, hopefully you'll have seen it. And um, somebody in the comments told me, and I hadn't seen this, that the um, I got in the Windsor Newton uh, Cotman watercolors um, because Lindsay uh, the frugal crafter had recommended them as a good kind of um, not budget set but kind of a mid-range set and um, I bought them a few you know a while back probably earlier this year at the earliest if not late last year and um, when I use them on, you know I use them on the picture because they're a fairly common type of watercolor set and um and the colors that they use probably could be easily replicated in other sets as well and they seem to perform very well on the paper i was impressed i they weren't streaky like the other watercolors i've used so i don't know if that was because of them or if it was because of the paper but somebody in the comments told me that um lindsay had mentioned that they're no longer made in france they're made in china and because of where they're being made now, um, she doesn't, even though the price point is staying the same, the materials have changed and she doesn't necessarily recommend them now. Um, I haven't seen that and I, I usually follow her videos pretty closely, so I could have just missed that. But is there, if anybody out there has the watercolors or has heard that, can you confirm it in the comments? Because I mean, I may have lucked out and ended up getting them before they were uh, outsourced. So I may still have, you know, like the original set, but that's a real shame if that's the case. And so if it is, I'd like to know because then, you know, um, obviously I can't recommend them because I don't know if the ones that are being made now are the same as the one I have, right? So... I'd have to come up with something else to possibly recommend, but the set I had did very well. Um, did better than the other watercolors I've had. 
it was able to pull a lot of pigment very quickly off the watercolor palette um, it didn't I didn't have to spray them to pre-wet them they just dissolved so well that just running over them with a wet brush was enough to activate them very well um, which has is not been the case with the other watercolor sets I've been using which are more budget sets so anyway if anybody knows let me know in the comments so um but i i know this this particular coloring chat's been scattered i'm i'm sorry i it's i i'm scattered as a person right now <laughs> i feel like i'm trying to juggle so many things and keep keep a lot of stuff still going and and like I said, when I have those moments to breathe and stuff, I'm just not feeling inspired to do anything fun. And and that's been hard. Like, I don't feel relaxed or refreshed in any way, shape, or form like I was hoping I would. The thing is, I don't know if another week would have made a difference. Uh, just me being me, I don't know if I just would have done all the same stuff over the next week and still been struggling. So, um, who knows. Now, one thing I have been doing a lot of is nerding out in YouTube and watching a lot of history stuff. I've been absolutely fascinated with, like, uh, medieval history and... Um, at my history medieval history um there for a while i was following a, a lot of information about the time period of like henry the eighth all of his different wives um i followed a lot about some of the uh french history like louis the 14th and the building of versailles and then um of course marie antoinette louis the 16th and the whole uh french revolution and all that and uh, the last few days, I've been particularly listening to a lot of uh, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian history and stuff. So um, I've just been re really nerding it out <laughs> with history lately. I was telling my husband, I was like, you know, it'd be fun to kind of do one of, you know, those college classes where you don't technically get credit, but you can go and, and like still participate in. I can't remember what the technical term is called. But um, I'd love to do that with, with some ancient history and some medieval history. And I have to sneeze. Hold on a moment. <coughs> I at least tried to take the mic off and move it away from me. And um, so I've just been... I'll, I'll post some links to some of the different sites I've been uh, looking at. Uh, Absolute History being one... Um, All Out History being another Odyssey. Um, I think there's actually now um, like a channel or an app you can subscribe to that, you know, is what the Discovery Channel used to be. All these really cool historical documentaries and stuff. And, you know, of course, it's not like that anymore. Just like the Learning Channel is not. <laughs> TLC is not the Learning Channel anymore. But this is kind of like what Discovery used to be with, like, historical documentaries and stuff. And I can't think of the name of the app or the channel or how, you know. But probably once I start getting paid, I'm going to subscribe to it. But they, they really put a lot of work into these, like, YouTube documentaries. I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm nerding out. And <laughs> I know a lot <laughs> about a lot of odd topics that I, I keep joking to my husband um, that, you know, we'll be sitting around uh, with his parents and it'll be like, you know, this awkward silence. And then I'll start talking about how... Uh, all of different Henry the Ace different wives and and you know how why he had so many and um there was <laughs> there was even this is this goes south way there was even um a really fascinating uh piece I was watching the other night about uh syphilis and how uh historians have always believed that when Columbus uh sailed back to Europe he brought it back with him from uh the Americas but there's some, uh, they're finding through some digs in um, Europe, they're finding evidence of it 
um, you know, 100, 150 years before Columbus even got back, right? So um, I haven't fully finished watching that, but I just joked to my husband, I'm like, yeah, can you imagine an awkward silence for your parents? And I'm like, hey, do you want to talk about the origins of syphilis? <laughs> see Brent over there just you know doing the the cut thing at the net like cut it out cut it out and I take that as I should be talking about Henry VIII like oh you want me to talk about Henry VIII and beheading his wives and stuff oh okay yeah sure we can do that <laughs> oh my gosh well if if anything any topic at least it wouldn't be over dinner I would have enough sense not to do that but um, don't just, you know how you you start watching stuff on YouTube and you wind up in a rabbit hole of places? Like, that was me. Like, I have no, I just happened to come across that video. And it was just like, oh, wow, this is actually kind of interesting. Who <laughs> would have guessed? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll put a link to some of my favorite historical channels on um in the description if you're like me and you're interested in like medieval or, like i said my big thing right now is egyptian ancient egyptian history um during the time of uh uh now i blanked out anyway ancient egypt around you know three thousand years ago basically before uh in bc and stuff like that and just the different rituals they had and just seeing like I want so bad to travel and like I want to be able to go to Turin and I want to see like the exhibits where they found an intact tomb of um some of the tomb builders like the guy that was like the foreman there and his wife they found their tomb almost entirely in or entirely intact because he had hidden it away differently and so robbers couldn't find it easily so they still had all of their worldly possessions in there which was you know the style at the time to when you were being buried to have all your worldly possessions buried with you so that you you would be well served in the afterlife and um <laughs> It's really like, I, I see, so they have this exhibit where like they have their beds, they have all these different, all the different pottery and like boxes that were recovered, a chair, like all this furniture and stuff. It's just still looks to be completely intact and it just, can you imagine actually being able to go to an exhibit and see that? I mean, videos there, but it just, you know, so now that's kind of on my list is places I'd like to go um in the world and uh looking at history and things like that and of course interest in history if, if that was happening this week well ahead of of the news about the queen which was very i mean we knew knew it was going to happen right but it's shocking nonetheless and it's just been it's one of those things where I've always been fascinated by her life and she's always been one of those strong women that I respect like the role she has played and the pressure that's been on her excuse me uh, uh, that was said she's over here coughing but the she's not always made the best choices i think in hindsight you could say that of anyone there's a lot of issues in terms of colonialism and you know a lot of people that were not the queen's biggest fans because of things that happened to family and things that happened to um you know while during the struggle for independence for a lot of like african countries and such during this time and so i don't you know the way i look at it i don't invalidate anybody's feelings about it there may be somebody over here who really respects her um and and thinks the world of her thinks of her as a grandmotherly figure and there may be somebody over here who absolutely despises her um i don't invalidate either one of those because their feelings, their the reasons behind those, and I, I know how I feel about it. But I also know my my family wasn't impacted by her like it was, uh, you know, for so many other people. So my viewpoint of her is is different, I guess. And so 
Um, I just, I don't know. I, I always, like I said, was really fascinated by her life. And like I said, she didn't always make the best choices and, you know, had flaws, I guess, like every other person, but just the, the grace, I guess, that she, she exhibited and just, I don't know, as a woman to me, I, I just admired her for, for that and for having a really good sense of humor. I've heard some really good stories about her, um, and just being very mischievous and just having a, a real sense of humor that, you know, not a lot of people got to see and stuff. So, um, but anyway, um, I guess I say all that to say that, you know, my perspective of her was certainly different than, it, than other people's. And so it, it was very jarring to me when she, when she passed and, you know, I'm, very saddened by it personally but that doesn't mean everybody has to feel the way I feel about it and so I'm not going to argue with anybody about it please don't argue in my comments about it just let people feel how they feel about it and and let's just move on um or not move on I guess it's because then that just sounds like I'm anyway y'all get what I'm trying to say hopefully all right, we are at <laughs> close to the finished picture here. I'm just cleaning up a little bit with the white gel pen, and then I'm going to add some stars in, and we are done. So like I said, other than the dark blue and the yellow at the top and the fence, I think everything else, yeah, the background and stuff, er, the majority of this was real brush pens. So um, I actually had a lot of fun with them. Like I said, the last few times I've used them have felt a little difficult, but this time, like, I was pulling pairs easily and able to get some really nice blends, and it, it was just very, um, this was a very smooth experience with them, and I had a lot of fun with them, just, and a lot of it was being able to play with the different colors. Um, like I said, with the cats on the top, I used opposites on the color wheel like blue and orange and yellow and purple and then you know also had the black and white cat at the end and then at the bottom I just wanted some different color flowers I made sure you know with the white daisy and stuff just to incorporate some white balance into the picture and then um yeah play around with the greens and overall I am super happy I am way happier with this picture than I thought I would be when I first started it um, I figured it would just be low key, you know, pretty much straight coloring and call it a day. Then I got inspired to try some different things with it and it actually turned out to be a lot of fun. So, um, trying to think if there's anything else now, it's been, <laughs> I've hit on a lot of weird topics, just mentally just nervous about, you know, starting on Monday, um, I'm going to try to have the first color long pencil version of the Pirates page Monday night. If I can't do it Monday night, then it might be Wednesday night. Um, Tuesday, I am going to have some new flip throughs. I did order two new books, three new books. One's a digital one um, that I'm going to be doing a flip through of. And then, like I said, I may save the Pirates picture for Wednesday. Um, if not, then I'm going to skip Wednesday and Thursday, just it being the first week of work. Unless I suddenly get inspired to do a watercolor Wednesday, um, I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. Um, if I so, um, And then Friday will be continuing my collection. So you're going to see three videos during the week. It just Tuesday and Friday for sure. And then whenever the pencil picture happens to fall will basically be will basically be it. And I think that's pretty much how I'm going to go from here on out. Tuesdays will be flip throughs of any new books I've accumulated in the past week. Um, Mondays or Wednesdays will be, hopefully one will be the colored pencil color along and the other one will be like a watercolor picture, but 
that may not be the case just because of how crazy things are going and then the coloring book collection on friday over the weekend i am going to try to color some kind of picture doing something fun if i can't and so that's probably how it's gonna go um yeah i'm gonna do the watercolor picture probably on sundays instead of wednesdays so i'll be averaging out but still about four videos a week which is more than I have been doing in the past but I feel like that's a good schedule to be on um, for a while and while I go through this training so um, we'll see how it goes but um, yeah like I said the cats are doing fine for the most part I don't know how I'm doing I did get some new pencils to try my supply haul actually is going to be uh, interesting this month I went ahead and ordered the 12 set of the Karen Dash Luminance and the 12 set of the Derwent Lightfast. And I want to try each set and figure out, I eventually will have both sets, but I want to figure out which set to get first because I do get a bonus on my first check. And so my, I'm going to splurge a little bit on my, um, uh, when I get my first check. And so I know the Karen Dash are, are the luminance are crazy expensive, but if I like them a lot, I might go ahead and get them. But um, if you guys want to see me, want to see a video of me trying those out, that might be something else we do on the weekends as well. Um, I do want to fit in a couple more watercolor pictures before the end of the month because that's when watercolor summer will end. But um, honestly, I think my next thing is going to be less watercolor probably using more pencils more I want to get into using my pencil sets more and showing you guys like some demos color alongs um first looks at some of the different sets and things like that that's probably the next real big focus I'll have I'll still have watercolor stuff I'm using because I love using gelatos and stuff especially as a base for said col colored pencils but um, the focus will be away from watercolor summer once that's over with and probably again like I said focusing more on really getting some use out of my pencil sets so anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you have a good rest of the weekend and if I do not post Monday night then new flip throughs on Tuesday and then you'll get the pencil uh, pirate color along part well, I guess part two because the base was part one um, Wednesday night so thanks guys for watching and bye for now